absent. Jody, you were here? Yes. Wayne? Looks like he's trying to get in. And same with Diana Day. Hey. Okay. Uh, Nancy? Here. Jim? I am here. Karen? Here. Adam? Looks like he's on the phone. Oh, here. Jamie? Here. And here comes Wayne and is, you said Diana was coming in? Yes, Diana's in. Oh, there you are, Diana, are you here? I am. Excellent. And this is Wayne, I'm here. Great. Everybody's present except for Donna. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to public comment. We'll ask if any members of the public wish to speak. Uh, comments are limited to three minutes. Please state your name and the city and town of residence for the record. And if you're speaking on a particular agenda item, you can hold that comment until that time. But I also understand you may want to do that now if you're in a time crunch. So that being said, are there any comments? Cindy, I see He's the here. superintendent. You have to, you're not muted. You should be able to talk. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank this commission and I'd like to thank specifically Donna Lascalia for the work that's been done with the high school issue. Um, I know that you will be seeing some data uh, presented by parents from Northampton High School that reflects that we've made some progress, but I think we have a long way to go. And so I'm here really to speak in favor of continuing to work on the efforts to mitigate the traffic situation at the high school. And I will just share with you a uh, comment that I think puts into to perspective the, the scale of the issue at the high school. And this comes to me from one of my crossing guards uh, who is a retired firefighter in the city of Northampton, who professionally spent more than 20 years of his life running into burning buildings as, as his job. And he told me that he never felt that his life was in danger at any time when he was a firefighter to the extent that he feels it's endangered every day when he stands in that parking lot trying to help our students and staff get into the high school. And so I think um, that just speaks to the need for us to have a solution at the high school. Thank you for your time. I'd like to go next, if that's okay. Sure, just I state, state your name. I'm Lori Valancourt and the principal of Northampton High School. And I would like to start by offering thanks to Megan Peck, who has um, been really crucial in um, getting feedback from parents about the parking lot and uh, crossing crosswalk safety. So thank you, Megan, for that. Um, I also want just to say that there has, you know, just about every day I'm hearing a complaint from, yes, as Dr. Provo said, the crossing guard, but also a parent parent who's calling to say that they were honked at, that a car did not stop for them, that they had, you know, there was a near accident leaving the circle parking lot. And so starting the day with students walking in and feeling already a little um, anxious just about getting into the building is a really hard place for way for students to start their day. So our priority is making sure that students are safe, that they're getting to school safe, and they're entering the building ready to learn. And so just taking care of this issue of parking lot safety and crosswalk safety is really crucial to starting our day right with students. And um, I think it's, you know, I think that this team is smart enough to support the solutions and really listen carefully to the feedback that our caregivers have given about their need for, for safety in this space. Thank you. Thank you. I see Megan Peck. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so good afternoon, uh, Chief Casper and commissioners, uh, members of the public. Um, again, I'm Megan Peck. I'm a parent in high school and the vice president of the PTO. So I'm just here because I'd like to give a little bit more context about the um, report from the surveys that the PTO had conducted in mid-October as well as a week ago about perception experiences and traffic safety around the high school um, and the trial elimination of the parking spaces next to Charles Park on Elm. So, so many students and 
caregivers and staff have responded since just a few days to those surveys that were shared by us on Facebook, the school newsletters, and especially through the school district communications. Thank you, Dr. Provost. Um, 605 and 340, uh, respectively, to first and second surveys. Um, we are also assisted by counselors in wards two and five uh, to reach community members beyond the high school in recognition that there are many stakeholders in this very complex long-term project to calm traffic around the high school. Um, I wanna make two points. Um, we are cognizant that there's so many factors actually beyond improvements or changes to road infrastructure, traffic management that impact our safety or um, perception of safety. And you know they include um, the changes and the new the new start in dismissal times, um, the school year that just coincided with the you know the rest hour and coolie shift change. Um, we have a solar glare in each direction, you know, at nine and three thirty. Um, there are proliferation of parking drop off spots. I'm sorry, drop off spots um, around the high school. Um, in in response to like changes in parking availability for students and such and. Um, we also know that lowering the speed limits around the school are, is outside of municipal jurisdiction, um, as is um, uh, making the area around the high school a, a school zone, um, which was explained by Director Lascali on the October meeting. But um, I wanted to express just a general appreciation for the PPC in just reviewing and considering all the open-ended comments in our two survey reports, you know, there are a wide range of perspectives and level of understanding and what is in your power to affect. Um, and I, I won't pretend to represent more than uh, a few voices among the parent volunteers, but um, we do hear a lot of support and gratitude for your willingness to try different interventions and uh, your commitment to make more dramatic changes in the long term. And we hope to stay engaged in your process and to continue exchanging information and ideas going forward. Um, I'll be available for any questions, suggestions about the survey or reports and um, can connect you to some people who are here, obviously um, in the high school who have more knowledge um, and insight about school policies. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Cindy, are you seeing anyone else with a hand raised? I am not. No, you're not. Okay. All right. If there's no further public comment, then we will move on to the next agenda item, which is the approval of minutes from the previous meeting. That was the October 19th, 2021 meeting. You should have all received it. I believe Beth sent that out. Uh, may I have a motion for the approval of the minutes from the October 19th, 2021 meeting? Uh, moved. So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the meeting notes? No discussion. So hearing none, Beth, can you call the roll? Was that Wayne who um, proposed that motion? I believe it was Adam and seconded by Councillor Foster. Thank you. Approval of the minutes, Jody. Yes. Wayne. Are you here, Wayne? I believe he's muted. Um, moving on to Nancy. Yes. Jim. Yes. Karen. Yes. Adam. Yes. Jamie. Oh, abstain, please. And Diana. Yes. Wayne, are you back with us? Wayne, you are unmuted on my end. Beth, we have enough without Wayne, right? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, let's move on to reports from departments and subcommittees and announcements. Usually we call on Wayne. <laughs> Wayne. Are you there? Do you want to make any reports on departments?
Okay, we'll hold off on Wayne for now. I have a few that I'm relaying from the DPW. These are DPW updates that Director Lascalia wanted me to share. Um, the roundhouse parking lot construction is complete. The lot and bike path have been reopened for use. Paving contracts in 2021, the final paving has been completed on all streets. That's Pine Street, Warfield Place, Loudville Road, Meadow Street, and Hayes Avenue. Signage is planned for installation on Wednesday. Tomorrow, Warner Brothers will be halting work for the winter and return in the spring. Uh, pavement markings. K5 Corporation will continue repainting all crosswalks in the city. The work will be done on overnight weather permitting. And for mass DOT projects, ongoing projects include the King Street Corridor improvements, Damon Road reconstruction, exit 19 at Damon Road, and I-91 bridges over Route 5, the railroad and Hockenham Road as well. Some contractors have already demobilized for the winter and will return in the spring. Um, any questions about those projects should be directed to Mass DOT District 2. Does anyone else have any department updates that they'd like to add? Councillor Nash? Yeah, it's, it's more in an, I have some announcements rather than um, department updates. Um, so um, uh, Senator Comerford has, is, um, uh, has at the Senate proposed a change to uh, chapter 90, uh, the, the, the bill is called S-2283. Essentially what it would do is that it would allow cities and towns like Northampton to lower speed limits, posted speed limits, um, any of the regulatory speed limits that we have in the city by five miles an hour. Uh, that, um, that proposal was at the Committee on Transportation last week. Um, Councillor Jarrett, Councillor Foster, and, um, and committee member Novit were all there to, um, to make statements in support. Um, it, it, it's all, it also was a joint meeting uh, between both the Senate and the House on Transportation. And it was interesting that there was a similar proposal on the House side by Representative Votolo, who is from Brookline. And um, I, I just look at this uh, as a real opportunity for us to work with uh, our, our state representatives to make this change. So that, um, that you know, as reported by member uh, Peck, who was reporting on what Donna reported at a previous meeting that how these regulatory speed limits, um, our hands are very tied. Um, and this would be a way of, uh, Five miles an hour doesn't seem like a lot, but bringing going from 35 to 30 could be significant around the high school. For um, uh, streets that have 30 mile an hour speed limits, we could bring them down to 25. And also it might be a, a way for us to open up uh, the, the idea of accepting the statutory speed limit of 25 miles an hour, which has been lingering for many years. Um, so that's my update on that. And, that, and then um, Chief, I have a few other things that I just like to comment on here, if, if I might. So I, I wanna thank the DPW and the city for doing the line striping for the crosswalks. It, the, the difference is really remarkable. And I've been hearing from constituents that even from people out of town, oh, wow, that's great. I can see the crosswalks again. So I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, I wanna speak more broadly about my role on the TPC because this is the end of term for, for council. And I'm not sure how committee assignments will play out. Um, uh, we don't know who the council president is and how things are gonna uh, be structured. So I just wanna make a few comments based on my time on the TPC, which has been five years now. Um, I've seen a transition from both chair, where I was the chair, a counselor was the chair for many years, uh, to now uh, where it's chaired by uh, the DPW director and vice chaired by the, um, the, the uh, the chief of police. And I think this change has actually shown it's been very effective. 
that um, the efficiency of these meetings, the, the amount of work that we're getting done is, is, um, is much more significant. Um, the, we are addressing uh, traffic uh, concerns uh, by people, you know, made by residents at a, at, a, at a steady clip. There was at one point, I remember sitting down with Donna uh, when we, we both kind of came on board at the same time and we were looking at possibly 20 tra traffic calming requests that we needed to get through. And I, I don't know the status right now, but I, I would imagine we're getting very close to caught up. Um, but with that in mind, I, I do want to add one thing, which is that while we've become more efficient, we also have become uh, less um, uh, creative in, in our discussions. And I'd, I'd like to uh, see a return to that for the TPC in, in the coming uh, uh, next year and beyond. Um, you know, it, an increased focus on traffic calming initiatives and experimentation and um, that, and also a, a, a connection between when we're innovative and how that actually ends up in the standards for how we, we rebuild our roadways. And that, um, so that, that's a piece. I'd like it to see us really take an initiative around the 25 mile an hour speed limit uh, citywide both through that statutory regulation and also through uh, the regu you know, taking advantage of these new uh, possible regulatory changes. Um, and so innovation um, and, and forward thinking. I think we've done the catching up portion. I think that's been really effective, but I'd like to see the TPC get back to a little more innovation. So. Anyway, those are my comments. Thank you for listening to me. And if I'm not back, it's been a lot of fun being on the TPC. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Counselor. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay, seeing none, I'll move on to the next agenda item. Uh, so we have a proposed ordinance relative to off street service area behind Thorns Marketplace. I'm going to read the ordinance first as I'm required, and then I believe uh, Nancy Forstall might be the best one to speak on this. So bear with me while I read. City of Northampton, Massachusetts, in the year 2021, upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission, uh, 21 uh, un unnumbered and ordinance relative to off street service areas. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled as follows. Section one, that the 312-118 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. 312-118, Schedule 17, on-street and off-street service areas. B, off-street service areas are established as follows. Parking area west of the Armory Street parking lot location, approximately 40 feet by 30 feet area at the back entrance of 150 Main Street by the Bollards, type of parking, loading and unloading zone only. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, then we can discuss the matter. Move a positive recommendation. Councillor Foster, thank you. I'll second it. Adam Novitz, second, thank you. All right, any discussion? <laughs> Councillor Nash, go ahead. Yeah, uh, could, um, uh, could Nancy give us a little background? Uh, th so this was before us, uh, I think a few months ago, and I think it was, th there's been a change here that it used to be for, I think for like a single truck to pull in. And now it seems like the whole area is, is a proposed loading zone. Just a, a little background would be helpful. Certainly. Um, what this is, is the rear area, um, rear entrance to Thorns. Um, Thorns, obviously it has a very congested number of businesses in it and we are um, attempting to improve the safety and the efficiency of deliveries to um, Thorns Market area. Uh, as you know, you often see trucks 
parked at the front of Thorns. Um, there is a no parking zone that is often being used by delivery trucks. Um, they're also blocking the visual on um, the crosswalk that's at the entrance to Thorns. So this is an effort to move these vehicles to the back of the building, off of the streets. Um, it, it's easily accessed from um, the Armory Street parking lot and where the parking garage is. So this is a, a great place for vehicles to be able to pull in and pull out. Uh, larger vehicles can pull in and pull out of it without a problem. There's also um, an existing curb cut, as you can see in the diagram, that will allow delivery vehicles to back in. The bollards are already in place that will provide protection to any pedestrians and also to the doorways themselves from the delivery vehicles backing into that area. This will provide um, um, a much larger area for a delivery zone instead of just the one that was basically off to the side. Um, this will definitely improve um, deliveries to the area, any kind of repair people trying to deliver things to the area for projects or construction that may be happening. Um, uh, this has uh, full support from the, um, the folks at Thorns uh, we work carefully with um, Jody Doyle and also made sure that this is ADA compliant by bringing over uh, Keith Benoit to look at the area and make sure that we were in full compliance. So we wanted to make sure that this was done right. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Councillor Nash. Yeah, a follow up to that. So the so the pedestrian right away is is around the perimeter of this or is it from the south? Oh, I see. There's a walkway. There's already it, an existing walkway. Yes. And then there's bollards protecting the right of way for the pedestrians. Right. There's bollards that are already metal bollards that are already in existence um, at in, that protects the sidewalk. Um, and the back doors. And these are the, the area um, meets all ADA compliance. Thank you. Nancy, is there any change being made here other than the ordinance? I mean, is there signage changes or striping or anything? The, the signage has been ordered and will be installed right by the bollards. Any other discussion on this before we take a vote? Okay, no further discussion. Beth, could you call the roll? You are currently muted, Beth. Sorry about that. Uh, Chief, how do you vote? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Karen? Yes. Adam? Yes. Jamie? Yes. And Diana? Yes. Passes unanimously. All right, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the discussion of roadway safety concerns in the vicinity of Northampton High School. We heard some public comment on this already, and I know we have some folks who are on here who probably want to uh, potentially happen again. Um, Donna asked that I share some of the following piece of information before further discussion on it. Uh, school staff and members of the public provided their safety concerns to the commission through a survey that we heard about uh, conducted by the PTO. The DPW reviewed the survey responses and found that there are many concerns regarding near accidents, high speeds, chaotic and overwhelming intersections and drivers not yielding to pedestrians. So there were a lot of suggestions with the most repeated one being an added light for people to cross. And just another note that Donna wanted me to mention is a reminder that the high school is not eligible for a school zone. It came up as a suggestion several times, but uh, we're not permitted to do that. And finally, uh, the, the DPW and the police department have temporarily prohibited five parking spaces uh, that's been discussed at an earlier meeting. Uh, right by Child's Park to allow for continuous bike lanes. 
as a separate agenda item, a U-turn prohibition is proposed at the intersection of North Elm and Elm Street. And this is to reduce the conflicts and near misses with the pedestrians, bikeless, and other vehicles right in that area. And where additional improvements are being examined. So I'd open this up. This is just a discussion matter right now. I'll open it up to discussion for any folks who are in here. I'd like to say something really fast if I can. Yes, Anna. I have a student at the high school. Um, I have looked at the guidelines. I don't think that I need to recuse myself. It's not really involving the high school property so much as the public way. And I think all of us share concerns about the intersection in general and all users of it, not just the high school users. So um, with that, again, I don't think that I need to recuse myself. I wanted to disclose it and disclose the fact that I did receive the parent survey, but in light of serving on the commission, I have not participated in the parent surveys or anything so that I'm coming to this fresh. So. Thank you. Is there any other public comment on it? Councillor Foster? Not public though, if, if you wanted to, to go to other members of the public, I'm happy to wait. I, I think you're the only one who wants to speak right now that I can see. Okay, thank you, Chief. I appreciate it. Um, and and just real quick before I do, I just um, in the last discussion I um, realized too late I wanted to thank Nancy for her work on the um, loading zone around Thorns. Nancy, I know something you've worked on for a long time, so thank you for your work on that. Um, discussion around the high school. I um, was struck. I read through the results today, and it was it, of the. I read through the the information from the PTO survey. That was so incredibly helpful. Thank you, Megan, for. Um, for your hard work to put that out and collate it. One thing I was I was struck by, or I guess I have a couple of thoughts. Um, one is, and I'll bring this up with Donna. Um, I've talked with the crossing guard or played phone tag with him, um, heard voicemails, and also saw it quite a bit. Um, for parent feedback was the idea that um, having removed the parking spaces is really great for sight lines, but it's creating an opportunity for cars to pass, um, you know, if there's cars waiting to turn left or waiting for the crossing guard, it's an opportunity for cars to sort of skirt out around the line of st stop traffic. Um, and I, I understand that Jersey barriers can be placed in the spring, but they can't over the winter because of snow removal. But I'm wondering if even something as simple as um, barrels or cones for the crossing guard to put out when he's there, if that may um, prevent that one maneuver. Um, the other thing I, I was struck by, and it's beyond the scope of the commission, um, but there was certainly a lot of feedback around parent drop-off pickup procedures. And I, I just wanted to name that that's a sort of in tandem discussion that, that we can look at, you know, the, the design of the roadway and, um, you know, the U-turn ordinance and that sort of thing. Um, but it, it has me wondering what more could be done to communicate with parents or students around the drop-off pickup so that, um, you know, I, I did see a few comments that parents were stopping in those empty spots um, to drop off or pick up their student. I don't know if there's work that can be done around um, the parking lot. I know there was a, an option, uh, a consideration of maybe the spots right in front of the high school being accessible parking only. Um, you know, I don't know if, if some space could be carved out in the, in the parking lot for more visitor parking. Just something to say that I realize it's really out of the scope of the, the this commission that that's more of a, of a school side discussion, um, but it's one that that we would want to, I think, work in tandem um, with the school on that to really improve safety here. Um, and otherwise, I would, will save other comments for a discussion of the no U-turn ordinance. Okay, thank you. Any other, Councillor Nash? Well, I'll never pass on an opportunity to talk about the traffic at the high school. Um, you know, so uh, my business had me working at the high school for uh, about 12 years and working with uh, uh, students with disabilities and teaching them to access the community. And to, I'm super familiar with all of these situations. I, I went through the survey. I read, you know, I read through all 24 pages of comments from the original survey and also the, the, the comments from the um, addendum survey. And that of the, while the comments are all over the place, I think everybody's right. The, the situation is um, particularly a pickup drop off. Um, it, things are really out of hand. Um, that um, 
that there is a it, it's almost like there's a flash mob of of every of of parents, students, buses, and commuters all at the same time trying to fill the same space, and that the conventions of you know how one behaves on the road kind of all go out the window, and that um, and that people are are less uh, uh, apt to you know wait for you know, oh, it's a stop sign, you can proceed and then I'll go. Um, that people entering the crosswalk are, you know, they're just flowing into the crosswalk rather than waiting and letting a few cars go by. That there's, um, it's kind of a mayhem that goes on. And that, um, that you know, and, and then the school buses are waiting in these vital locations of the parking lot and blocking everybody in. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, it what it begs for is is a real thoughtful redesign of not just the um, you know of the way we're using the roadways, but also the way that we're having students and parents interact with with the high school. That having everybody show up in the same ten to fifteen minute window creates a window where everybody's there for like 20 minutes to a half hour. And that, um, and that you know, there's, there's been disincentives for students riding the school bus. There's disincentives for students to take public transportation. Um, and that um, I, I, it just, it, the whole situation, it, after working on some of this, oh, similar things over at Bridge Street School, um, that I, I, I think revisiting, you know, both the culture that you were create, creating on the, on the roadways, as well as actually looking at what, what are the amenities there in terms of parking spaces and, um, and crosswalks as well. That, um, so there's that one comment. All right. The other one <laughs> is that there really are, there's different things, these, so there's pickup drop off. That in itself is, is mayhem. Then there's, um, then there's traveling, there, there's that zone throughout the day where actually where travel speeds go down. We saw that from the data that Chief Casper shared that, um, that by and large, um, that during the middle of the day, it's kind of like, oh, this is the way we want things. And then if you look at the data, once it gets to after hours at the high school, you know, once it gets to three or four o'clock, people start speeding up. And then that's where you have, you know, the, the folks, you know, hitting 50, 60 miles an hour at 10 o'clock at night, set, you know, 11 o'clock at night. And so all of these different things are going on at this location. So I, I think it, it just, it begs for some sort of um, in more intensive study. Um, I, I applaud, you know, uh, looking into ways to improve sight lines and things like that. Uh, but I, I think there's, there's a whole system here that needs to be rethought through. And, I, and when the high school was re redesigned almost 20 years ago, this, this piece was not th thought through. Back then, kids still mostly rode the school bus and a lot of kids walked to school and there were less kids had cars and that all of these things are, um, are, are, are converging here and have created a, a really different situation. So sorry for taking so long there, but I couldn't resist. Thank you, Councillor. Jamie, did you wanna say something? Yeah, I just wanted to add briefly. First of all, I appreciate both counselors' comments and, and agree pretty much um, across the board. I will add to Jim's list of dis uh, disincentives the one for riding a bicycle through that area, which, as we just saw, um, can have tragic consequences. Um, and agree that you know there's there's plenty of space there uh, for the city to step back and um, really consider a new design. Um, to solve the problem of drop off and pick up and um, the tremendous amount of traffic that goes through that area. So I just wanted to say that and hope to see um, more on this soon. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to, uh, Councillor Jarrett? 
Thank you, everyone. Um, yeah, thanks to Councillor Foster and Nash and uh, Commissioner Albo Fisher for just the, your comments uh, about that issue, this issue. Um, and also want to thank Megan Peck and the NHS PD, PTO for the survey. Um, I have heard positive feedback on the removal of the parking on the Child's Park side. I think it's definitely improved visibility for all users at the crosswalk. And also um, previously bicyclists who are traveling west would have to merge with other traffic uh, while also navigating the intersection with Woodlawn. And now they can focus on that intersection and making sure they are seen by folks turning right uh, from Woodlawn. <clears throat> so I think that's an improvement. Um, I think that you know we all want to decrease the likelihood of people making mistakes, and I think that this has helped with that. Um, but we also know that people will make mistakes, and so the question in my mind is: is how do we design this area so that the consequences of those mistakes uh, are lessened? Um, and I think that reducing speed is a large factor. If you look at a speed reduction of just five miles an hour, can decrease the likelihood of a, of a fatality considerably. So I would ask that the commission consider um, starting the process with the state to review the speed limit here um, and to redesign the intersection and, and related intersections, um, both you know, in the short term with paint and cones and other, other actions that can be done uh, quickly and inexpensively. And then in the long term, uh, the change to the hardscape and as, as Councillor Nash said, a, a real look at the, the design of the whole area. So uh, thank you all again for your work. Thank you, Councillor. Any other comments on this matter? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to the next agenda item. The next agenda item is the proposed ordinance re relative to the prohibited U-turn on North Elm Street. So I'm gonna read the ordinance and then we will open it up for discussion. City of Northampton, Massachusetts in the year 2021, upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission, 21 unnumbered and ordinance relative to prohibited U-turns. An ordinance of the City of Northampton, Massachusetts, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton in City Council assembled as follows. Section one, that the 312-65 of the Code of Ordinances be amended as follows. 312-65, U-turns prohibited. No operator shall back or turn a vehicle so as to proceed in the direction opposite to that in which such vehicle is headed or traveling on the following streets. Name of street, North Elm Street, Route 9, direction of travel, Northwest, at intersection of Elm Street. That's the entirety of the ordinance. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation? Then we can have discussion. I'll make a motion. Move. Second. I didn't see that one. Did you, Beth? You, no, could we, who, who was first? That Nancy and Wayne, Nancy and Wayne, maybe? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, with the positive recommendation, is there a discussion on this matter? Councillor Nash. Yeah, I just wanna say how this is really badly needed. You, it's, especially from the diagram here, you can see that people are U-turning in the crosswalk. This is the main crosswalk for um, many students uh, as they'll, they'll park over uh, you know on side streets over here and that um yeah and also parents will be dropping uh students off along the child's park side so this is preventing people from turning in the middle of a crosswalk with students so absolutely i support this thank you councillor councillor foster yeah, similar. I, I definitely support this. I've heard um, a, a com an interesting mix of feedback. Um, you know, people who are really focused on safety in that intersection um, are, are really supportive of that ordinance. There is a little bit of concern. I've heard from uh, a handful of folks who live on Woodlawn, um, you know, recognizing that 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 is one way, actually, that that they'll leave Woodlawn, make a right on Elm, make a U-turn, and then head the other direction. So that that's just going to be a little bit of education there, I think. Um, 
but overall, um, the majority of comments I've heard have been supportive and, and I'm definitely supportive as Councilor Nash pointed out. You turn right in the parking lot. It's also, there's not a lot of space there. Um, so it's, it's, it's not an easy maneuver and it's one, I don't know, when cars are making U-turns, they tend to do so quickly um, and without able to take in all the, all the surrounding information. So I, I, I definitely am support um, of doing this. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got up really early. My brain is like <laughs> clicking here. Um, the other thing I was, I was wondering, or just to throw it out there, there is, it's not uncommon that uh, vehicles will um, cross prospect onto Woodlawn um, because of the four-way stop there. It's a fairly major route. Um, and, and I do think that there's traffic that's getting to the end of Woodlawn expecting to turn left and forgetting that they can't. Um, just going to throw it out there. I don't know if there's any kind of sign that can go with, on the other end of Woodlawn to help educate drivers ahead of time. Um, no left turn onto Elm um, might help a little bit with those um, unintentional, um, you know, traffic that, that meant to turn left and can't. Thank you. All right. I don't see anyone else. I, I will just chime in. Um, I absolutely fully support this, this ordinance. I, Alex I, Jarrett has his hand up. Okay, I will call on Alex Jarrett in one second. Um, I would just add, you know, this is a, a very dangerous area and I just wanna echo both Councillor Nash and Councillor Foster for having uh, a U-turn go over a crosswalk in such a, a quickly moving area and an area with so much activity. Um, I'm surprised that it is something that is there now. So I am hopeful that this will pass and we'll be able to make this change. Councillor Jarrett. Thank you. Um, yes, I was uh, uh, similar to what Councillor Foster said, looking at uh, the where will what will people do instead once this is prohibited and uh, perhaps they will just continue along past the island um, that's that's just beyond this intersection and make a U-turn there that that would be safer I, um, because it won't be right in the middle of, of an intersection. Um, so just thinking, or will they turn left and try to make a U-turn uh, by the high school or perhaps go through the high school park, you know, just, just to, to think that through. Um, but it certainly, it, it seems like that the options are better than the current situation. So I am in support of the ordinance. Thank you. Does anyone else want to make any statements about this proposed ordinance? Okay, no, so there's a motion for a positive recommendation on the floor with no further discussion. Beth, please call the roll. Yeah, uh, Jody? Yes. Wayne? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Karen? Yes. Adam? He appears to be tied up. Uh, Jamie? Yes. And Diana? Yes. It's seven in favor. Excellent, thank you. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item. This is discussions of traffic calming request on Park Street. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit as I did conduct uh, some of that um, data collection for in response to the traffic calming request. Uh, as for collisions, I did a five-year look back, and during that five-year period, there were 13 documented collisions on Park Street. And it's notable that five of the collisions occurred at the intersection with Park Street and North Main. Four of those involved vehicles on Park Street pulling out in front of other vehicles traveling south on North Main Street. Uh, it was noted that one of the collisions involved a bicyclist and two involved pedestrians at that same intersection. Um, so they were all actually on North Main Street, but it did come up in the data. Uh, so as far as the collisions go, none of them were particularly connected to speed. It was really more driver error when they got to the end of the intersection and they looked, they didn't do a full check and they missed the vehicle or the pedestrian or the bike list and, and collided. As for speed, we put the covert speed data collection device out there from May 11th through May 18th of this year. We analyzed 37,255 vehicles. This is a posted 30 mile per hour zone and the 85th percentile was 37 miles per hour. So we identified this as a high priority area. 
and we've actually been directing some of our traffic officers out to Park Street in an effort to calm traffic there and slow them down. Although again, speed wasn't really a factor in the collisions, uh, but still uh, vehicles are traveling over the posted speed limit. Um, so that being said, that's an overview of Park Street. Uh, you know, there were no recommendations for any significant changes to the street uh, based on that data. Is there a discussion on Park Street? No discussion on Park Street. Um, okay. Oh, yep, go ahead. Adam. Yeah, actually, I just want to say a little bit about the sort of Park and North Main intersection. Um, it's I'm I'm at Lilly Library, um, and I will say that that intersection is a little bit confusing from a pedestrian's point of view, because if you're coming from Lilly or the cemetery or whatever, um, you either have to walk, you either have to cross onto. Um, it, it can be, I can understand why there's collisions and accidents at the intersections of Park and North Main because the it's not immediately apparent where you would cross at that intersection um, because the crosswalk is up by Lily Street or crosses in the other direction between Lily Library and the VFW. So to me, it's understandable that there were accidents um, at that intersection. And that's all I really have to say about that. Councillor Nash. Thank you. I'm not sure if you can see me or not. <laughs> like two hands will actually make a difference. Um, and did uh, Chief Casper, did you say that the speed limit on Park Street is 35 miles an hour? No, 30 miles per hour. And the okay. 85th percentile was 37 miles per hour. So people are tending to go faster there than they should. <laughs> they are. Yeah, okay. So, and, and your recommendation is for uh, more enforcement uh, rather than um, looking at traffic calming measures here? Uh, it's a short street. Uh, you know, you're all probably familiar with Park Street. It's a short street, but it's a straight street. Um, it does have sidewalk along it and we don't have any collisions affiliated with speed. So really, if you're looking at you know, I guess in an ideal world, we would be able to make changes on lots of different streets, you know, to, to calm traffic, but there are, we have to prioritize streets. Um, and in this case, we don't have the collision data to support, um, you know, too much, too many changes. We just have people traveling on average seven miles over the speed limit. And that's something that usually we can deal with just by having um, unexpected enforcement. So we put officers up there randomly, uh, you know, we program it into our directed traffic plan for the month ahead. We've been doing that with our high priority streets. And so officers are have a presence on Park Street. And I think for all of us in here, if you've seen a police officer park somewhere running radar, you probably will remember that for most of your life, especially if you've ever been pulled over. Like people make note of where police officers are sitting and make an effort to uh, slow down. So that's what we've implemented uh, as a result of the speed data. And also in the area uh, that uh, Commissioner Novit was speaking about, which is near the traffic island and um, and the intersection with, the, you know, that there's this confluence of roadways there. Is there, um, is does the speeding occur there as well, or is it just on the straightaway? It's really just on the straightaway. Uh, he's talking about really the end. So it would be hard to speed there because you have to stop. You're coming to a stop right there. Um, and I, I, as you're turning right, it's a pretty good corner that you also have to slow down for. And actually there's a good amount of things that are in the roadway now, uh, little raised sections and, and signage that kind of make you slow down and naturally because you're kind of taking in what you're approaching. But I believe that intersection was just recently changed. Someone else in this meeting may have more info on that. I don't know if someone from the DPW may have knowledge, but, and Adam, actually, you may have the knowledge yeah, of when yeah. those changes occurred. It was changed maybe last year. And um, I misspoke saying that the crosswalk is at, actually at Cosmian. Um, so yes, it was changed at the most a year and a half ago. So relatively recently. 
So I think there was a recognition that there were some issues at this intersection and there's already been a change to the intersection to address some of those things. Yeah, so I, I guess I'm, I, I, in terms of the request here that I think that they're saying that they're seeing speeding on the straightaway, but I'm, I'm just wondering if it has to do more to do with the crosswalks at the end, the crosswalk at the end of the street. And I, I'm so that's the one thing I'm not sure of. So I think we're talking, we might be talking, they might be making a addressing a concern that we may not be looking at. I, I'm, I'm not sure. So, um, but I, I feel based on this um, request that we've, we've looked into what they're, they're talking about. They aren't in the meeting, are they? I don't, I don't see anyone in the meeting who would have right. been connected to that. Okay, thank you. All right, is there anyone else that wants to speak on Alex Park Street? Jarrett. Okay, Councilor Jarrett. Thank you. This is one of those odd situations where it's not currently in my ward, but it will be as soon as redistricting is complete. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I, I know, don't know a lot about, don't have a lot of firsthand familiarity, but I know that there is a, uh, a cross, not a crosswalk, a sidewalk on one side of the street, but anyone who's looking to access the cemetery or the residents that uh, do not have a crosswalk, which is the side that the cemetery's on, do have to cross this street um, or walk along it you know, for quite a ways without a sidewalk. And um, <clears throat> so looking at ways to, to more permanently, I mean, I appreciate the, the additional enforcement and I wonder if that will be after a certain period of time, if we'll look again and say, you know, has that been effective? Um, but also, so Jarrett, you're breaking up and we, we can't understand you anymore. Okay. I don't know if you want to try to maybe shut your video off to see if we can hear you. We missed the last 20 seconds of what you said. Okay, video off, can you hear me now? Uh, not very well. Not very well. Okay, just going to close all the other things. We can hear you now, Councillor, if you wanna give it a try. Good. You can hear me now. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I was speaking to pos the. You, did you hear about the how there's sidewalk only on one side, and how yes. the the cemetery uh, those accessing. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. So, so possible, possible um, um, yeah. things to look into um, would be uh, striping to for apparent to to make the roadway uh, more <clears throat> narrow or apparently narrow, whether that's spike lanes. Um, or just just striping the uh, a speed sign indicator, um, and um, I'm not sure if 30 miles an hour is too fast for uh, for speed humps like on Riverside Drive. Um, I know all these things are potentially more expensive, but um, just wonder if the commission would consider those. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Commissioner Day? Um, I just wanted to say that we go walking around through Florence all the time. It's it's near our house. And um, even though speed is is definitely uh, hair raising when the cars are going by, that that's, um, you know, we talked about the issue with the intersection and that, that can be confusing and challenging. But um, because of the design of, of the road, the striping that's there, and the fact that there's a sidewalk separated from the street, we've, we've felt safe on that road. Um, I really like the idea of the enforcement and maybe, you know, conserving resources for, for other projects if, if the enforcement can work. So that uh, seemed encouraging to me. Um, and I'm interested in seeing how that works out. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on Park Street? Yep, can you hear me? Oops. 
Y yes. Can you just say who you are? You're just. Oh yes, I'm so sorry. It, uh, it's Rachel. It's now Oh, I'm having to take the time with my internet. Okay, Councillor Mayor, you're a little broken up, but you can try and we'll, we'll give you a listen. Uh, well, thank you. No, I was just going to say that um, I received a letter. Um, I believe Council Jarrett wrote, uh, um, also saw that letter back in April from a resident. And I was just going to reiterate what they said, you know, that basically their kids, they had to kind of sprint across the road um, because of, I guess the side they, they you know they don't have the, the sidewalk on their side so there's that concern is about the kids living there and having to sprint across the road I don't know what the solution exactly to that one is um, I don't know if April was after the changes I believe it was um, and they were still saying there was speeding and referred to someone who was killed on the road uh, years before but yeah I think it's just uh, for that resident it was um, the young children and um, speeding and this idea of sprinting across the road. So I just wanted to kind of frame that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else on Park Street? Okay, then we'll wrap that up and move on to our next agenda item, which is a discussion of additional accessible space at 22 to 34 New South Street. Uh, we actually received a letter from Keith Benoit. I don't see him in here, if he's gonna be able to speak on this. I have a few bullet points I can share with the commission, but uh, to be honest, I don't know much more about it and was hoping uh, Keith might be here to speak on it. So I'll tell you the bullets that I have is that the Disability Commission is requesting support from the TPC to add an accessible parking space on New South Street, uh, changing the most southerly parking space on the west side from a metered space to an accessible space is an option. And that's really all that I know about this. So I was looking forward to learning a little more about it, but we may have to move it to next month if there's no one here to speak on it, unless anyone here has information to fill in on this. Councillor Foster, you look like you're about to raise your hand. <laughs> yes, you're muted right now. I see Director Fiden here, and I don't know if he might have information from Keith. I don't, Keith, Keith is out sick, so I know he's not gonna be in the call. I know this came out of the Disabilities Committee meeting, but I wasn't involved, so I don't know that it can be on with the Chief, just summarize. Okay, it, Councillor Nash? You're muted, Councillor. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is a request for us to explore adding some accessible spaces in this area, correct? So I, I, I think that, um, uh, I, I know that, I just got a text from Councillor Thorpe that he wanted to be there. He, he's still caught up in court, um, but that um, I, I would recommend that we, look, you know, that we consider looking into some accessible spaces in this area. Um, and um, we could, uh, you know, consider uh, pushing this forward to the next meeting to get some more information, uh, but. Uh, and, and maybe Councillor Thorpe, who won't be Councillor Thorpe, then can a, to, could attend. Um, so um, that might be another solution. So those are, I, I see those as the two ways we could go here. Okay, thank you. It sounds like the best step would be to have DPW take a look at the area and see if they would make a recommendation on that. So I'll talk to Director Lascalia after this meeting, and then hopefully for the next meeting, we might be able to have a little more and maybe even a proposed ordinance. So. Um, we'll deal with that in the interim between the two meetings. Any other discussion on this? Okay. Then we have the proposed ordinance relative to parking areas reserved for municipal use. Let me read this one. City of Northampton, Massachusetts in the year 2021 upon the recommendation of the Transportation and Parking Commission 21 dot unnumbered an ordinance relative to parking areas reserved for municipal use. An ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton in city council assembled as follows. Section one, that section 312-33 of the code of ordinances be amended as follows. Section 312-33, location of parking areas reserved for municipally owned or municipally operated motor vehicles parking restrictions at certain municipal buildings. 
C, location of reserved spaces, amended 319, 1981, 15, 1995, 11, 1, 2012. One, locations designated. A, the first parking space on Crafts Avenue closest to Main Street shall be reserved for the use of the Central Services Department. B, there shall be four spaces reserved for building department use located adjacent to the municipal building. C, the parking lot behind City Hall shall have seven spaces reserved for municipal use, beginning with the first space on the easterly side of the City Hall lot adjacent to the handicapped space. D, there shall be 10 spaces reserved for municipal use in the parking lot located adjacent to 240 Main Street Memorial Hall. E, the roundhouse lot behind the municipal building shall have 10 spaces reserved for municipal use. Section or two, the reserved spaces listed in subsection C, 1C, D and E shall only be reserved Monday through Friday between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. During all other times, these parking spaces shall be available to the public. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation? Move a positive recommendation. Councillor Foster, may I have a second? Second. Nancy Forstall, thank you. All right, discussion on this? So if I may, um, I've asked that the roundhouse section be added to this to codify an existing use. Um, these are the areas directly behind um, the municipal building that are presently there for um, central services um, and various offices within the municipal building. And they are being used as such right now. Um, so like I said, this would codify that. And also, this ordinance would allow these spaces to open up for public use after hours, after normal business hours, um, because right now they basically are sitting empty after hours and we can use all of the parking that we can get. So this will help to open these spaces up. Councilor Nash. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, so I, yeah, I think this is a great idea. We have a parking lot and um, we have spaces and we're going to make them available for city services during the day. That's, that's brilliant. Then um, just one other question um, that the, I, I think it's the building department um, has like, and, and Nancy will know about this, like three or four spaces directly next to where their office is. And, um, and my question is, is the building department a part of this plan or maybe a, a future plan? Um, because we, we've talked about surplusing that area for some sort of affordable uh, housing or, uh, or resilience hub type of, of uh, development. So we would lose those parking spaces. And I'm wondering if the thought is, if, if we've already thought of that already, um, or if this is a solution for that down the road. These are already um, being used by a number of other departments within these buildings. Um, this is not addressing that at this point. So not to, I, I don't want to get too far off topic, but would it be easy to add another three or four spaces to this current grouping? I think that we should um, frankly wait until um, we have a more determined use of that area before we move forward on reserving extra parking. I, I appreciate your cautious approach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, can you tell me, does is it only the bolded section here that is the amendment? The rest is existing? The rest is already existing uses, and the bolded part is the is the part that I've asked to be put in there. Um, okay. And also that the uh, number two, that we make sure that we cover um, public use right. for these new spaces and for the existing spaces behind City Hall. 
Got it. Thank you. Councillor Nash. Yes. Yeah, so one other question, because okay, so there's we have spaces like this, and I'm never quite clear. Um, I think it's on um, Old South Street. There's a number of spaces for the the messenger and folks like that. And I'm like, no, I can't park there. But what I what I'm seeing is that after hours that the public can use these spaces. And I'm wondering if there's clear signage, uh, letting people know they, they, can, they can use those spaces once we're no longer enforcing uh, parking. Yes, they do say that. Oh. Okay. And, the, and this, um, the spaces behind Roundhouse, I mean, the spaces in the Roundhouse lot, um, the signs will be the same as the ones that you see in the city hall lot. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? No. All right, there's a motion for a positive recommendation with no further discussion, Beth. Jody? Yes. Wayne? Wayne? Are you there? Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes. Karen? Yes. Adam? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Diana? Yes. Wayne, have you come back? I have come back and yes, sorry, couldn't find my mute button. That's passed unanimously with eight. Right. Thank you. All right, next item is the update from uh, me and Director Lascalia, who's not here, about a previously submitted traffic calming application, and this is West Hampton Road. This is actually an intersection that I brought up over the years as an area of concern recognized by the police department because we go to a, a lot of accidents there, and when we go there, the accidents are sometimes more serious just because of the speed of the vehicles traveling on Route 66. So uh, Fuss and O'Neill was hired to look at this intersection and generally speaking, they found that uh, the crash statistics really showed what we thought was happening, which is a majority of the crashes were angle crashes, meaning cars that were you know, struck from, from the side um, by vehicles traveling on Route 66. Um, and it was kind of interesting that the average total crashes between 2013 and 2015 was two, while the average between 2016 to 2018 was four. So the crash history is suggesting an increase in crash rate. Uh, there's really no major differences in peak hour demand and other components. Um, and also of note, they did a speed analysis. So the speed limit on West Hampton Road in that section is 30 miles per hour. The observed 85th percentile in that area was 44 and 43 in the two different directions, westbound and eastbound. So a pretty significant speeding problem there on West Hampton Road. They also looked at speeding on Glendale Road and West Farms just to see if there were speeding issues there. Um, those are also 30 mile per hour zones and the 85th percentile was under the posted speed limit. So no speeding concerns approaching the intersection coming in from West Farms and Glendale, but a significant speeding issue on uh, West Hampton Road certainly. So this is one of those areas where we definitely have directed some police resources there for visibility, um, but with the crash data and because of the seriousness of the collisions that occur here, um, there's recommendations for further change. So without getting too much into all the details that Fuss and O'Neill gave, I'll just read over the recommended city actions from Fuss and O'Neill. They recommend installing solar powered LED intersection warning signs on West Hampton Road near the intersection install supplementary warning signs on the same post showing the approaching cross street names, Glendale Road and West Farms Road and, and the distance, install additional speed limit signs on West Hampton Road to remind drivers of the speed limit, install solar powered LED stop signs on the north and south approaches to West Hampton Road, that would be on West Farms and Glendale, Install cross traffic does not stop signs on the same post as the stop signs facing the Glendale Road and West Farms Road approaches. Trim back tree branches that are obstructing visibility. And then install an additional LED street light on utility pole 151 located 250 feet east of the intersection. 
in general, um, trying to educate drivers about uh, one of the reasons for the collisions is that some people traveling on West Farms or Glendale either don't know that 66 isn't going to stop or they're impaired or whatever else it is, but something is preventing them from sometimes stopping at those stop signs. They just go right through it. So the flashing lights, the reminding of the speed limits for people to slow, um, and the signs indicating that the cross traffic doesn't stop should all be helpful uh, mm -hmm. as a response to uh, the concerns that were raised here. But that's just an update. I don't know if anyone has any questions or anything they want to mention on this intersection. Councillor Foster? Just to say thank you for um, for moving this forward and um, bringing these recommendations, you know, these recommendations from Fuston O'Neill. This is actually an intersection I bike through really regularly. Taking, I, I often take a left off West Farms onto 66, and there's also the hill that really um, can obstruct the view of oncoming traffic. So, um, you know, bringing extra attention, particularly to, to vehicles on 66, um, it is really great because I, I don't know that everybody can 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 see very well exactly what's going on there. I'd love to redesign that hill. I completely agree. When you're on Glendale and if you look right first and it's clear, then you look left and then you pull out, there could be a new car that you didn't see. It's a short, uh, shorter sight line. Yeah. Councillor Nash, you had your hand up. Yeah, so um, the, the, the recommendations kind of prompted a, a question. So that are people misreading the intersection that it might be a four-way stop? Is that part of why people are just pulling out? They're assuming, oh, that car is going to stop. And no, it's still coming at them at full speed. Um, is, is that part of the issue? or I, it, I'm... it seems like the biggest issue is that people just miss it. For some reason, you know, as you're approaching it, if you're just kind of, ca it's dark out on West Farms Road, you're kind of casually driving along and then all of a sudden you're at a stop sign. And not that it's unexpected, but if you're not from the area, you know, for those of us that have driven out there, it's not like you see it coming from a mile away. So you could forget about it and just not be focused on driving. And by the time you see it, it's too late. So I think that's more of the concern. So having that flashing and seeing it from a while away would definitely be a good reminder for drivers, you know, whether they forget it's there or are impaired or just aren't focused, um, all those things. It's dark out there. Yes, and the, the, I, I will say this, I, the approach from Glendale Road coming up, the stop sign tends to be off to the side because the roadway kind of curves and having, you know, uh, something flashing there to, you know, remind the drivers to stop should would be helpful. And also the work on improving the sight lines, I, I think that's tremendous. So um, I, I, I wanna thank uh, the city for doing all of this work and Fuss and O'Neill, <laughs> thank you. Any other comments about this intersection? Okay, seeing none, the next item on the agenda is just reserved for any new business. Is there any new business that anyone wants to mention? No? Okay, last agenda item is adjourning. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Second. Second. Jamie, Adam, Beth? Jody, would you like to go home? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wayne. Yes, I would. Nancy? Yes. Jim? Yes, and I'd like to eat dinner. Karen? Yeah, and find out what my puppy's doing. Adam? Yes, and I'm going to my in-laws. <laughs> Jamie? I'm sorry, I got Jamie, right? And yeah, Diana. Yeah. You wanna go home, Diana? She's on mute. She's mute, you're muted. Diana, do you want to know? Sorry. Nod? Yes, I would like to be done. Thank you. I vote yes. <laughs> Everybody's interested. All right. Sounds good. With that being said, motion adjourned. Thank you all so much and have a good evening. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. Well Take care. done.